Hey everybody, welcome today to our Journey Church online platform and we are from the Journey Church in Southeastern Virginia in Chesapeake. Listen, um, I'm hoping that you're joining us for the first time and if you are, let me tell you about the Journey Church app. If you search uh, in Google Play or in the App Store for the Journey Church VA, you'll find our app. It's a little square black thing that says JC right in the middle. That's Journey Church or Jesus Christ, whichever you prefer. But it's a great way for you to connect us. We have all our announcements in there, all the ways you can connect with us, all the ways to find out information about who we are and what we're about. It, it's a great connection point for you. Also, if you have kids and you want to invest in your kids and their discipleship and have questions and answers you want to have for kids as far as following Jesus, look, we have a link to our kids page right here on this platform and you can avail yourself of it using a tablet with our app. So I encourage you to check that out, both for our students and for our kids. This week we're starting a brand new series called God's Will, Questions for God. We've noticed that people have this question a lot lately. And in fact, since March, we've gotten a lot of that. So this is going to be a really intense series. I'm hoping that it raises just as many questions as it answers. In fact, I know it will. But that's not a bad thing. God wants us to engage Him. So I'm, I'm hoping that you will do that. I'm hoping that you'll watch it, that you'll share it, uh, that you invite people to watch it with you this week and next week, that it creates more conversations about God answering today's first question, uh, which is really intense, who is God? So as we sing this next worship song, think about this. What is this song saying about who God is and who he is to you? You know what? I encourage you to share that in the chat section as you listen to and you honor and worship God. All right. Well, God is good. I'm excited for the day. So let's get started.
Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Journey Church online campus. Today, we're starting a brand new series called God's Will, Questions for God. We got to this series because we have really good analytics at our church, and we can kind of see how people kind of run across us or they discover us online. And it's usually because they're asking this question, and it's fascinating to me. Here's the question. God what is your will now we know that after March 15th this was the primary question that people were asking when they came across the journey church website God what is your will and this is just a loaded question with assumptions and even more questions behind it since the pandemic began I think people have been looking for meaning they've been looking for meaning in lots of places they they look for meaning in facts well we've gotten lots of information since the pandemic began and, and it's just hard to tell where the facts are sometimes but even if we knew the facts even if we knew the facts and we scientifically analyzed them would it really give us meaning would it really tell us why what would it tell us the deep things we want to know sometimes people have been looking especially this year of the election towards politicians and they're asking um, for meaning politicians typically I don't <laughs> they don't tend to give meaning what they tend to do is ascribe blame and so in your your pursuit of meaning wanting to know questions like why and how and what they will point to the other person and ascribe blame and say well this is this is the cause of your ailment but if you vote for me or my team well we will make all things right um, that's what politicians do. It's about power. But I don't think they really offer meaning. And this is what we're pursuing when we're asking this question, God, what is your will? It's, it's a really, really thick question. It assumes there is a God who has a will. So there's a really powerful evidence of personhood to it. So here's what I think about God's will. If you, if you want to know what God's will is, if he's really a person, then the more you know God, the more you'll know his will. Out of that comes all these other powerful questions. And the one we're going to talk about today is this. If you're a person, God, and God, if you're a person, God, who are you? And in our narrative today, as we look at, as we look at Scripture, I'm hoping we can get some answers with meaning. Would you pray with me? Well, Father, as we, as we look at the written word, as we look at this narrative today, I'm praying, God, you, the person that you speak into our hearts and minds, that though I've prepared something and I'm filming it, that you will, you will use this to be evident that you are to people, that you are who you say you are, and that you will be present in a powerful way and offer to us the very thing we look for in, in you, meaning. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, when I talked about Scripture, I want you to know that the Bible is, is a, it's a narrative of sorts. It's got lots of different uh, literary types in it, but essentially... It's a story, it's an overarching story of God interacting with people in history. The culmination of this action is the story of this one man named Jesus, who is really not just a man, but he is completely a man, and what he does. But before I get too far ahead, just bear with me that we believe, if you're, if you're looking at the Journey Church and you're here today, you must know that we're a Christian church. So we believe that this writing was written by lots of different men inspired by God to give us truth about who God is. And that's where we are. And in the narrative, at very near the beginning, as a matter of fact, in the second sort of book of the book, in the third chapter of this section, there's a, there's a place where this man comes to terms with this really tough question. Now, the man's name is Moses, 
And Moses is a very interesting guy. Moses, actually, uh, he had lots of questions. Moses grew up in affluence. He knew his people were being oppressed because Moses had a people, but they were not the ones in power. And when he saw somebody, a particular person, oppressing some, his people, he took action and he, uh, he killed him. His people did not respond well to his killing someone, even though they were oppressing him. And so he was, a, he was just afraid. And so he leaves. He, he exiles himself. Now, he's 40 years old when this happens. He goes out. He runs to a remote part of the Middle East in a place called Midian. And there becomes a shepherd. He has children. He gets married. And he lives there for 40 years. So when he's 80 years old, Moses probably still, well, I know he still has questions about what is God's will? Why am I here? What's going on? What's, how is this going to take place? I, I, he just was there. And God shows up. And this is important. He shows up in a way that's unique to Moses. In a way that Moses would understand something was trying to get his attention that was deep, powerful, unusual. It lured him right in. Moses sees something that looks like a bush that's burning, but it doesn't become consumed. And so he's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. That is some feeling maybe he gets like, what? That, that's weird, man. I got to go check that out. So he goes and he checks it out. And that's when something in the bush, inside the bush, talks to him and it says, Moses, Moses, uh, take off your shoes for your own holy ground. And Moses is like, oh, what in the world? And he, he takes his shoes off and they, there's this conversation that begins. Get that? There's a conversation. And God says to Moses, hey, I've seen your people. I know the, 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 the spot they're in and I want, I want them to free them. And I'm going to send you to, send, to take a message to the most powerful man in the world and tell him to let my people go. And Moses goes, me? You want me to do that? Why me? And God says, because I'll be with you. What's interesting is, is that Moses, uh, he didn't, he, he, he had a hard time buying that. Even though this entity says that I am God. I am the God of your fathers, the God of your, and he names some of the ancestors. And the word he uses is Elohe. It means divine one. I am the divine one of your ancestors. I'm the, I'm the one. So Moses says, okay, that's cool. I'm glad you, I'm glad you're the divine one, but, um, but, but I'm not, I, I don't, I don't really know you. <laughs> that's really what's happening. And Moses asked this very interesting question. Here's what he says. Then Moses asked God, if I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What should I tell them? What is your name? And this is more than just, what do I call you? He's really asking, God, who are you? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the Israelites, the Lord Remember I said that, the Lord, and that is all caps. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is how I am to be remembered. Now, he said, I am that I am. I am who I am. I am what I am. I am who I will be. I will be what I will be. All of those would be true in this translation. In fact, the word he's using is uh, echye. He says, Echye Salhane Echye. And it's I am who I am, or I I will be who I will be, or I am who I will be. It's all the same. But when he says the Lord, this is the name you'll use that that capitalized in English Lord. It's a special word and it's not a title, it's a name. And in Hebrew it spelled like this but we don't know how it's pronounced because it was such a holy word as the name of God that would reveal his character that they didn't say it so even today God's name is not spoken we really don't know how it's pronounced we hear words like Yahweh that's one way to say it but we don't know for sure what it is it's powerful it's set apart but it has the same meaning is that 
I am who I will be. I will be who I will be. I am that I am. All of those being true. What's, what is it in this name? What's in his name? Well, the first thing that this means is that God is imminent. He is present with us. He is powerful in his presence with us. He can do what he wants to do when he wants to do it, but interacts with us in his presence. He can choose who he wants to act in the world as he interacts with the world. It doesn't have to be anybody. And this powerful presence is evident, even though you might say some people will have a hard time buying that. God is imminent. The second thing this name means is that God is transcendent. While we want to kind of comprehend God and we want God to be who we want God to be, the truth is, is he's more than what we want him to be and he's not just a person. He doesn't live in one moment at a time, which really ties into imminent because he's in all moments at all time and that actually moves into another word we'll talk about in a second, but God transcends all of our ideas about him. He is more than what we can comprehend. He is transcendent. And since we're speaking about that, God is also holy. Because he is the source of life, he is, he is powerful and dangerously powerful. He, like the sun, which gives life to the earth, if you get too close, it's not good. God, who is full of life and power and energy, to recklessly go about trying to be around him is, is, is dangerous. That's why, that's why God tells Moses to take off his shoes. His shoes are made of leather, and for leather to be made, something had to die. The leather represents death, and God says, Don't bring that in my presence. I am not about death. I am only about life. The ground you're on is holy ground. Take your shoes off. God is holy. God is also omnipresent. All of these tie together to say that God is in every time, at all times, at one time. He is in every place, at all times, at one time. God is omnipresent. So, knowing these things about God, we got we to gotta kind of say, so what? What is the ultimate piece here? Ultimately, I need us to grab this. That God is personal. He's personal. God wants a relationship with us. He wants it. He desires it. And that should change the way we think about this ultimate reality that it wants connection with us that that it knows us but it wants us to know him as he is a person throughout the rest of the narrative of scripture when who God is is described there's always a personal aspect revealed for example God is personal so he is a refuge and protector of our soul this scripture in Psalms says, The Lord is a refuge for the persecuted, a refuge in times of trouble. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock where I seek refuge, my shield and horn of my salvation, my stronghold. That horn of salvation sounds a little weird, but it really means the strength of my life. God is personal. When he's described in scripture, he's described as the authority of all things. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. And that doesn't mean that he's a vengeful, mean God. It means that nations who try to replace him will die in his presence. Nations who try to be God and they are not will not survive. God is personal. God is personal. How is he described in the scripture? He is the creator. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And since we're talking about that, God is personal. He is beyond our understanding. Since he's the creator of all things, listen to this verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He is the creator. The earth was out form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So God is the creator who is the life bringer who hovers like, um, like a mother 
over her child and who speaks reality into existence. That's God. He is not understandable. Not to us. So when we're asking this question, who is God, we have to ask, we have to, we have to take a position. Here it is. First, we need to be humble knowing that we probably can't put God in the box that we want. And speaking of putting God in a box, I think it works like this. We come to this party in search of God with baggage. Luggage, literally. Luggage. We bring luggage. There's Some of our luggage has stuff in it from the past. Some of it's pretty empty, and we're looking to fill it up. That's why we look. And we bring different shaped luggages, we different shaped bags, and we want to put God in our bags so that we fill full. And the problem is, is our our bags are never enough. And the stuff that's in our bags can get in the way of trying to have God fill us up. When we, when we come to the table asking God, what is your will? Um, we ask, who is God? And when we do, I think I have to ask, what am I really asking? Am I really asking who you are? Or am I just asking how I can fit you into my bag? Because the truth is, if you want to know God, if you want to understand His will, if you're looking for this answer, if you're looking for meaning in life, the truth is, the more you know God, the more you know His will. The more you know God, the more you know His will. I just want to take a second and look ahead. We're going to talk about who God is, as we've done today, what he's like, what it means to look at Jesus. Because what if God, what if God really wanted us to know him? Wouldn't he want to model what it would be like? Wouldn't he want to come to our level? Wouldn't he go out of his way to be with us? Wouldn't he want to show us how to live a life that's full and rich with meaning and purpose and love? Wouldn't he do that? If he did, would we recognize him? Worse, what if, what if he did already and we missed it? That's, that's the real question. Because maybe all we need to know God's will is right at our fingertips, right in front of us, ready for us. God wants you to know his will more than you want to know it. God wants you to know him more than you think you want to know him. And for all of us, God is finding ways all the time to get our attention in a way that's unique to us so that we'll come to him and say, God, who are you? As we spend these next few minutes in reflection, I'm hoping that you'll ask these questions. Concerning our luggage, what presuppositions do I need to let go of to embrace who God is? And let's get honest. Believer, questioner, somebody just checking this out. Let's be honest. Have I tried to make God into something for me? And let's seek to pursue God and let's look for a deep, heartfelt answer to this question. God, who are you? I hope that you'll listen to this worship song and reflect and think and pray and ask for God to reveal himself to you.
Well, this series, as you can see, it's going to be it's going to be deep. It's going to be difficult, but I think it's everything that God wants. God wants to know you. God did actually come to the world as a human and live out what he wants us to live like. You know what? If we're asking who God is, you need to know that God knows who you are and he cares more about who you are than what you do. Because God loved people so much that he gave his son, who is him, and that's hard to explain, we'll get to that later, so that you might have real life now and forever. As you continue to watch this series this that we're doing, and God is moving in you, and you want to worship through the giving of your tithes and offerings, let me invite you to use the giving link either on this platform or on the JC app. But most of all, I'm praying that you pray and that you're consistently seeking and wanting to know who God is. It's a good question to ask. Who are you, God? Father, I'm praying that as we move together, that you reveal yourself to us, that we can, we can approach, even though we can't fill our luggage, we, you're too much, but as we approach you, Lord, we do so understanding who you are and what your nature is. Continue to bless the people, Lord, and guide them towards you. Give us direction as we ask for it, because we know you want us to know the best for us. Reveal it to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, hear me when I say this. We don't sit on this knowledge, we share it. And so, church, you are sent.